Okay, well that's my uh, pot scrubber battery um, buried in the ground and uh, it's the uh, second day and it's still working and I put a light wire on it. That's just speaker connection wire and ran it into the house just to see if I would lose so much that I couldn't run anything with line loss. And because it's such a small amount of energy, that's working. And I got that running through a jewel thief circuit right there. And that's blinking a jewel thief right there. And uh, that works quite well. The um, amount of energy uh, is so small that even with this really lightweight wire, I'm not losing all that much. I'm losing some, but uh, I wanted to see if you could take something on the outside of your house and run it into the inside and have something function. Now like I say that's the jewel thief blinking right there and I'm going to stop this and just make the reed switch just go on and you'll see this uh, jewel thief come on here and uh, it's still bright out so you can't see that very well but that's a jewel thief running right there and uh, it's a simple uh, jewel thief circuit. Now that's a one-to-one -one transformer I got out of a VCR and a little um, NPN transistor there. And uh, that's the little LED. And that's running on half a volt. But because there's enough surface area, I'm getting away with it. And then this little pulse motor, what that does is that blinks it when it's going and gets it blinking. And that uh, blinks right there. Now I have a capacitor right here to help store up the energy. That's a 50 farad, 100, um, um, a 50 volt, uh, 1000 uh, microfarad cap. That's not a big cap. That's a little one. And so um, it, it's not a super cap. But I also want to show you this uh, table model version. And that's the pot scrubber in there, and that's the uh, cast iron one, and that's the copper one right there. And uh, there's the voltage on that right now. And you can see it's quite a bit better voltage than the one outside because it's just sitting in water. And so that's what you get. And that's just the plain old um, bottled water I put in there. And it's drinking water. It's not uh, got any electrolyte. There's no vinegar. There's no acid, uh, lime juice, lemon juice, anything in that. That's just water and it gives you 0.83 volts. Now I'm going to hook this up to that and show you the difference in performance when you have it in a liquid electrolyte instead of just in the ground. And you'll see it's going to be rather dramatic here. And that, that really, uh, really makes things go pretty, pretty good. I'll let you listen to it by a little radio. You'll hear the tick, tick, tick of the reed switch. Now, I don't know if you can hear that chirp or not, but that chirp is the jewel thief circuit. Hear that chirp? Now I'm going to stop the rotor here again. You're going to hear the jewel thief circuit go. That's the jewel thief circuit running. Sounds like outer space noise, huh? Now you can see what that did to my voltage here on this battery. When I loaded it, it dropped it down to about 0.4 volts. I'll go ahead and get this little pulse motor going again. I can. Okay, now that's pulsing the dual feed. Now, this is what's really interesting about that is this is a voltage booster and that's being lit by the back spike of that collapsing coil. I can charge a battery with that. There's enough voltage and the spikes are high enough and I can actually charge a one and a half volt battery off that back spike. So while you're running this thing you can actually be charging something else.
Thanks for watching.